So friends, I welcome you to our Swift session. We're going to discuss today Swift empty messages for payments. Let me explain the methodology we're going to follow today for the discussion. I will explain the slides one by one. At the end of my delivery, we'll have a separate question and answer session. So I will request all of you to keep your questions on hold till I complete. You can go on typing your questions whenever you have them in the question panel. And then as and when I complete my delivery of all these slides, then I will take all the questions one by one. So to summarize, I will have the presentation done first by me on Swift empty messages for payments. After my presentation is complete, then we'll have a separate question and answer session. So please hold your questions till I complete. I'll also request all of you to remain on mute when I'm delivering the session. And once we complete or when I complete my delivery, you can unmute yourself and then go on asking me the questions. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Makaran. I'm into this line for last 32 years, delivering training for different companies, different uh, areas, including payments. Let me also explain to you about our company, which is delivering this session. This company was established in 1996. We are currently engaged in three major business activities. We do consulting and training services basically in the BFSI sector. And this includes advising banks and IT companies on banking regulation, banking products and processes. And we also help IT companies in product design and development. In fact, in the audience, I see many people from JP Morgan and Chase, many, many, many people from HSBC City who have joined and also a couple of people from outside the country, India. There are many people now in this session from Europe, also some of them from the United States. Now, as I was, as I was saying, we are into the IT consulting. We also do IT security, vulnerability analysis, penetration testing, functionality testing, functionality testing of banking applications, including mobile banking applications. We also handle ISO 27001 implementations. We have another division which provides risk advisory and risk assurance services. So typically this is the background of myself and my company. Now let's look at what kind of training programs we deliver in payment systems. We deliver four kinds of training programs in payment systems. The first program is the CIPSP, the Certified International Payment Systems Professional, which covers the understanding of operations of various domestic and international payment systems like the payment systems in USA. We cover there the Fedwire, the CHIPS, the ACHS, then Canadian LVTS. We cover the single Euro payment area like Target to the RTGS there. We cover China, Hong Kong and of course India. The second program which we have is the Certified Payment Processing Specialist which covers understanding payment transaction processing within a bank. So here we discuss how payment engines function, how various applications within the bank function, how a payment hub functions, and we explain how various applications are used in a bank to achieve straight through processing. The third training program which we have is the certified payment messaging expert. Here we understand in depth messaging standards like Swift MT, the Swift MX or ISO 222, the Fedwire and chip formats using payment transactions. We also covered the packs in UK and the payment systems which are using the proprietary message formats. The fourth program which you have is called the Certified Card Payment Systems Professional. This covers completely the understanding of card payment systems including the EMV standard, the ISO 8583 messaging standard as well as the payment card industry data security standard. Now having understood our training programs, let us start discussing the contents of today's webinar. In today's webinar, we will be first understanding what is Swift. Once we understand what is Swift and what it does, then we will talk about how banks, financial institutions and corporates send and receive messages using Swift. So that is typically the connectivity which the banks use and the corporates use. And after that, we will understand how to use Swift empty messages for payments. So this is the basic content which we are going to discuss today. Let's now begin our discussion on the first part, understanding Swift and what kind of services does it offer. At this point, we need to first cover the key elements before we understand what role Swift plays in the payment systems. Now, when we want to make a payment, there are three key elements of any payment transaction. 
the first key element is the message now let's take a different example before starting with the swift messaging when you want to make a payment you will need to send a message to somebody that the payment has to be made so for example when you write a check to your bank you're telling your bank pay this person whose name is written on the check when you use internet banking or when you use mobile banking again you are creating a message in an electronic format telling your bank whom you would like to make the payment similarly when you want to make a payment from one country to other country or even domestically you can create a payment by using a swift message and the swift messaging system now when we create a message the message can originally be a paper message like this example of a check which we took so you could write a check and make a payment to somebody or you could simply create an electronic message by swiping your card on a POS machine at a merchant's place telling your card issuing bank that you would like to make a payment to this merchant at whose POS machine you have swiped that card. To some of them, a message of payment can get created in an electronic manner. It can get created in the paper manner. So you could either use a piece of paper or electronic. And when we create messages electronically, you can use your internet banking, you could use a mobile app, and a similar way you could use Swift for creating the message. Now when a payment message is created, the same message can be used till the beneficiary is credited, the beneficiary is paid. For example, I give a check to you and your bank can use the same paper till the end, that is till you get paid by my bank. Or alternatively, when, use, when we use a card, a card could also be used to make a payment from end to end and an electronic message would be used from one end to the other end. So to put this in a nutshell, when I create a message, the message can be used throughout the process in the original form. For example, I'm creating a message in a paper form or an electronic form. Throughout the process, the same electronic message or the same paper message can be created. Alternatively, I can create a message in first form that is a paper and convert that into electronic or I may create a message in swift form which is electronic and later on convert that into a piece of paper. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when I create a swift payment, it's not necessary that throughout the process it will move in its electronic form only. It is possible that I use a paper, uh, I use a swift message and convert that at a later point of time into a paper message like a check message. So when we are going to create a payment, every time we create a payment, we are going to start that payment transaction with a message. Now let's look at the kind of transactions which we can do. We can do two kinds of transactions when we have a payment. I could have a transaction of push and I could have a transaction of a pull. So when I want to pay money to you, I will be pushing the money to you. And many systems like the RTG systems or the card payment systems are examples of pushing the money to somebody else. Alternatively, I could collect the money from you. That is, I could pull the money from you. So I could have two basic kinds of messages. That is a push message and a pull message. And the Swift system also allows you to have different messages for push and a different message for a pull. Currently in this session, we'll be focusing our attention, mainly the discussion mainly on the push method, not on the pull method. I'll explain how Swift messages are used to push the money and maybe at a later point of time in some another webinar, we will discuss how the pull messages are used by using the Swift empty service. Now one more point we need to understand before we move forward from this concept of message is understanding the kinds of messages we have in form of value messages and in form of non-value messages. When we move a value message, a value message would move money and when we use a non-value message, the non-value message is going to move information only. For example, when you write a check, a check is a value message and it moves money from your account to somebody's name, somebody's account whose name you have mentioned on that particular check. Whereas after the check is debited to your account, your bank will submit, provide you with a statement of account. This statement of account does not move money. This statement of account moves only information. To summarize then, we'll have two kinds of messages, a value message and a non-value message. Now, once we have created a message, either in paper form or electronic form, we will take it to the next step of clearing. Now, where is clearing required? Clearing is required only when I want to move money 
from one bank to another bank if the money is moving within a particular bank i will not use any clearing systems that is like moving the data within my laptop i want to move the data from drive c to drive d of my laptop i would not need any network but i would need a network when i move to when i want to move the data from my laptop to somebody else's laptop so in the similar way when i want to move money from one bank to another bank we will need the clearing process when the clearing process is being done the clearing house will compute the amounts to be paid by one bank to other bank i am going to use the word obligation to mention the calculation or to speak about the calculation of money to be paid by one bank to the other bank and the last element is the settlement settlement is when the beneficiary gets credited to summarize on this slide we have three key elements of any payment the message then the clearing if the message is moving outside that particular bank and the third one is the settlement i'm going to use two more words there could be an incoming payment there may be an outgoing payment now every time you create a message you need to use either an electronic mechanism or the paper mechanism and swift provides you with the mechanism with one of the mechanisms in electronic forms to create the message swift does not provide the clearing service swift does not provide the settlement service swift provides only the messaging service to some of them swift provides the messaging service it does not hold any accounts it does not hold any clearing services at the same time though we said that swift does not provide any clearing services it is indirectly involved in the clearing services for payments now there are many systems such as target 2 in single euro payment area or the large value transfer system in canada will use the swift y copy mechanism as a backbone for clearing and settlement of payment transactions which means out of the three key elements swift always supports the message in electronic format swift may support the clearing but swift is not involved into the settlement so the role of swift is now in this discussion limited to the message part and then we will not be discussing how swift carries out the clearing because swift provides only the backbone swift does not actually on its own directly carry out the clearing process so having understood the three key elements let's move to the next part of understanding who is the swift and what do they do now with this let's un- uh, we we'll look at swift as a cooperative now swift messaging services are trusted and used by more than 11000 financial institutions across the globe and they are there in more than 200 countries in may 1973 239 banks from 15 countries came together and decided to build a common messaging system and in may 1977 the messaging system which you see today clicked into life 6 months later they had more than 518 members now today they have got more than 11000 plus members they are spread across 200 and plus countries the fin service which we are going to discuss at a later point of time is available 99.997% and the services exceeded the availability targets by more than 100% they carry more than 6 and a half billion messages under fin service every year and the average daily number of fin messages is 25.8 million numbers of messages the peak which they achieved was 30.3 million messages on one single day Swift is a Belgian company with headquarters near Brussels. It has got 20 offices in the world's major financial markets. It has got three data centers, one in USA, the second in Switzerland, and the third in the Netherlands. And it has got four service centers to ensure fail-safe operations 24 by 7. As we said earlier, it does not provide clearing or settlement services. It does not hold any accounts. It does not hold any assets. The Swift Net messaging services run on Swift Secure Internet Protocol network (SIPN), which is a protected private network offering the highest available rates in the industry. They offer encryption, authentication, and control, and they also offer the integrity control and non-repudiation to us. So this is the basic background of what Swift does. Let us now discuss how would we connect to Swift. Now, when we connect to Swift. this discussion we are going to divide into two parts the banks connecting to swift and the corporates connecting to swift 
and when they connect to swift they can send messages to each other banks can send a message to each other the corporates can send a message only to a bank so let's understand how a bank would connect to swift now when a bank wants to connect to swift it may use one of its most popular services called swift net fin now fin is the longest established swift fin messaging service it enables the exchange of messages formatted in line with the swift mt standard which we are going to discuss now fin enables the exchange of messages on a message per message basis that means you can send one message one by one you can send the messages and it supports the exchange of proprietary formats also it is not it's not necessary that every time you send a message it must be in an appropriate format defined by the swift sometimes it supports the exchange of proprietary format messages between market infrastructures like stock exchanges or bank or the clearing houses and their customer the fin service works in store and forward mode and offers extensive functionalities like a message copy a broadcast to a group of other users and the online retrieval of previously exchanged messages you can retrieve the messages by using the swift net fin the second service which you use is called swift net file act the file act is to be used for transferring files it enables transfer of large files and typically it is used to transfer large batches of messages messages like a bulk payment file or very large reports or very large data under file act there is another service called file act copy service it enables the sender of a file to trigger a copy of the file header to a third party for authorization or even for information under the t copy model so under file act and the file act copy service we could have a y copy mechanism or a t copy me mechanism and these copy mechanisms are usually used in the payment systems for authorization purposes by the clearing houses for example in target to in single euro payment area we will use the y copy mechanism even in the large value transfer system in canada we use the y copy mechanism so the second mechanism which we have is called the swift net file act again enabling the bank enabling the banks to send a bulk file containing large payment messages to your banks the third system is called swift net interact like the fin service interact will enable the exchange of a message on a message to message basis that means you are not uploading a bulk file here you are creating one message and sending message one by one it supports here also the exchange of proprietary formats but interact has increased flexibility and here in addition to having the store and forward mechanism i could have a real time messaging and a real time query and a response options let's understand how suppose i am a customer of a bank in united states let's say i am in uk i am a bank in uk i am a customer of another bank in united states where i maintain my nostro account if i want to communicate in real time with my nostro agent in usa i would use swiftnet interact maybe interact with the application on the other side now how do you use it every day you use a similar a similar system every day when you connect to your own bank every day probably through the internet banking what you do is open your account at a particular bank using that account you may move money from one place to the other place you may even ask for certain activities to be done by the bank like you may request for a checkbook so when you use internet banking and connect to your bank to to carry out transactions in your bank account you are using your normal internet provided by some local internet service provider but if you want to use a, a secure and a structured mechanism to communicate in real time with your bank the way you use your internet banking facility you could use swift net interact to have real time connectivity the interact service also helps you in exchanging the mx messages now mx messages would mean i saw 222 messages created with the swift standard so these are flexible xml syntax and they are developed in line with iso 222 if you want to exchange them you need to use the swift net interact the last one is the swift net web access with web access the swift net users can browse securely on the financial websites available on the swift net now why do we need this web access because if a banker uses normal internet there could be cyber threats which is a never present risk and internet which is normal internet may not measure up to the security and the reliability demanded by the banks when they want to do their transactions 
and on the other hand when you use the proprietary channels like internet banking offered by your bank it is possible that you need to invest a lot of money in managing those so instead of using this you could use the swiftnet web access now let's understand how the corporates would connect by to the swift mechanism there are three basic methods of how corporates would connect the first mechanism which is used by a corporate to connect to swift is called the score the standardized corporate environment now the swift for corporates initiative was initially introduced in 1999 in a limited form score in the current form was introduced in january 2007 now using the score a corporate can communicate with any bank having swift connectivity now when a corporate communicates however it cannot communicate with another corporate using the score mechanism it can communicate only with the bank to summarize if a corporate is using score the other side the recipient must always be a bank a corporate is not allowed to send all different types of message using the score mechanism let's understand what kind of messages they can send when they are using the score mechanism when we speak about different categories when a corporate wants to communicate with a bank it can use category 1 and out of category 1 a corporate can send to financial institutions message type mt101 and a message type mt104 now we will be discussing this mt101 at a later point in time in addition to this 101 and a 104 a corporate using score can also send mt192 mt195 a query mt196 the answer and the mt199 what a bank can send to a corporate is an mt195 an mt196 and a mt199 this is now about category 1 messages which corporates can send to the financial institutions and what the financial institutions can send to the corporate now let's move further and look at what category 2 messages can be exchanged between a corporate and the bank a corporate can send an mt210 notice to receive which also i'm going to discuss at a later point of time today but a bank does not send any category 2 message to the corporate now this is again we are limiting our discussion to the corporates using the standardized corporate environment the third type is category 9 because our discussion will be focus on category 1 category 2 and category 9 i am explaining only those messages which a corporate and a bank can exchange between them when it comes to category 9 we have got cash management and customer status messages a corporate can send an mt920 uh request message requesting for a statement an mt995 a query and an mt999 a free forward message on the other hand a financial institution can send mt900 mt910 940 941 942 950 996 and a 999 to a corporate so this is the category which categories categories of messages which the banks and the corporate can exchange with, with each other when the corporate is using the swift standardized the swift score that is standardized corporate environment this is point 1 now i'll be discussing category 1 category 2 and category 9 today so uh, let me explain the details of these messages at a later point of time to you now the first mechanism which we discussed about how corporates can connect was the score the second mechanism is a closed user group now you could have two types of closed user group a member administered closed user group and a many to many closed user group now in a member administered closed user group a bank like bank a or a bank b or a bank c could create its own cug and if a corporate joins that cug a corporate would be able to communicate only with that bank which created the cug for example if bank a creates a cug a corporate joining that cug will be able to communicate only with bank a if bank c has created its own cug then a corporate will be able to communicate only with bank c which means in a member administered closed user group will have a one to one connectivity between the corporate and the bank in the member administered closed user group the corporate does not become a swift member the corporate becomes a sub member that is a member which is a bank under whom the corporate would be operating on the other hand you could have the concept of a many to many closed users a group it is possible that a couple of banks like bank a bank b and bank c come together and they form a closed user group in this in this situation then if a corporate joins that cug 
a many to many cug that corporate would be able to communicate with any bank which is a member of that cug so i could say in this way that this is a limited version of the standardized corporate environment in the standardized corporate environment we could communicate with any bank this is the score with the boundary which is the cug so you could communicate as a corporate with any bank which is a member of that particular close user group so in our example on the screen we have bank a bank b and bank c if corporate a joins that group corporate a will be able to communicate with bank a or b or c this is how the connectivity would come the the next mechanism is the treasury counterparty in a treasury counterparty mechanism a corporate which is a member of swift can send a message to any bank which is there on swift but it has got a limitation the limitation is the message which you are allowed to send under the trco model is a treasury deal confirmation which means it is only post facto once you have done a deal with a bank maybe with the treasury of the bank you can only send a confirmation message that we confirm having done this deal with you which means you cannot use the trco model for creation of payment transactions you can use the trco model only to confirm the transactions which you have done with a particular bank to summarize then there are four mechanisms which a bank can use to communicate with swift one is swiftnet fin the second is swiftnet file act the third is swiftnet interact the fourth is swiftnet web access and when a corporate wants to connect it would use these four products a score the member administered close user group the many to many cug and the trco or the treasury counterparty model now when we saw this kind of connectivity of corporates and banks now let's move forward to the actual swift empty messages at a very broad level so when we speak about these actual swift messages at a very broad level we will have different types of messages when we speak about the swift messages they are divided typically into three types the first type is the user to user message now a user to user message could be one bank one financial institution sending a message to another financial institution so when somebody wants to make a payment at that point of time the paying bank may use a user to user message to communicate with the bank to whom they would like to make the payment the user to user messages are further divided into nine categories which we will see on the next screen the second kind of message which you have are the system messages the system messages are sent by swift system to the user and vice versa now in this you could have user to swift messages the user creates a message for example he wants a delivery notification he wants to retrieve something in that case he will request the system the request the swift system that i would like to retrieve the past messages so this is a message created by user to swift system when the system receives this retrieval message it will actually retrieve those messages and present them to the user who wants those retrieved messages so i could have two types user to swift and swift to user these messages are category 0 messages the third kind of message is a service message a service message is also known as the control message i want to log in or i want to quit or i want an acknowledgement these messages are the service messages so when we have this message types let's now look at the user to user message types in the user to user user message types we have got nine different categories category 1 is customer payments and checks category 2 financial institution transfer 3 is foreign exchange and fx derivatives 4 is collections and cash letters 5 is securities market 6 is precious metals and syndications 7 documentary credits and guarantees 8 is travel checks and 9 is cash management and customer status in addition to this there is also a common category called category n and in this category which we'll discuss of course on the next slide we'll look at the numbering system so in our discussion today we will be speaking about category 1 and category 2 and we will also be speaking about category 9 now when we speak about the n category in fact in n category there are typically seven types of messages n90 n91 n92 n95 n96 98 and 99 which is a free format message and we discussed this 99 category earlier when we spoke about a corporate exchanging messages underscore with the parties so we'll have these common category messages also which are available there now the n90 is used for advising charges interest and other adjustments the n91 is a request for payment of charges 
92 is a request for cancellation. 95 is a query. 96 is the answer. 98 is a proprietary message and 99 is a free format. Let me also explain at this juncture only how do you use this N category. The N is to be replaced by the appropriate message category from the categories which you see on the screen. For example, I want to have a query about a customer related payment. The query message is N95. Then my customer payment related query message will be 195. One coming from the category one and 95 is the query. If I have a query about my bank statement, bank statement is category nine. My query about that will be 995. And the answer to that query will be N96. So when I send a 995 asking you a question about my bank statement, your response will be, a, will be 996 because N will get replaced by nine. If I have a question, about my customer related transaction customer transaction is one, category one my query will be 195 your response to that will be 196 98 is a proprietary format now proprietary format messages are also used by financial institutions that's called n98 so if there is a customer transaction the message type will be 198 if the transaction is a bank to bank payment that will be a 298 now this message type is used by banks with their own offices or with other financial institutions with which they need to have an understanding. They need to have a bilateral agreement with the other side that we would like to do this kind of messaging with you. It is used as an envelope for a specified message included in that particular message. This will allow the banks or the parties for defining a unique format which they can exchange with each other and which is not available. In the SWIFT system. The last type of N category is N99 which is a free format. The free format means you did not understand the syntax. You can send the message like you write an email. So those who do not want to use or do not understand how to use the SWIFT syntax will go for the 99 category. Now let's move into CAT1, CAT2 and CAT9. So when I speak about CAT1, under CAT1 we will have different message types. I have selected a couple of them for you and then I'll be explaining to you the other types also but discuss some of the major ones. Now category one is used for customer payments. The title is customer payments and checks which means it can be used for electronic payments. It can also be used in case of check payments. Now under category one we have MT101 a request for a transfer. MT102 is a multiple customer credit transfer MT102 straight through processing STP again a multiple customer credit transfer and in 103 we have got three types 103 core 103 remit and 103 STP now I have segregated these messages because all these messages which you see on the screen now are the pull push type of messages you push money you pay money to somebody by using this category the MT104 which you see in red on the screen which we are not going to discuss at this point because it's a pull message is about a direct debit and a request for direct debit. So to summarize we'll have MT101, 102, 103 which we'll be discussing which we'll be discussing today. 104 is what we will not be discussing today. Having said this there are two more types which do not come under series 1. They come under series 2 but they are expected to be used only along with MT103. Therefore, I'll also be discussing MT2. I'll also discuss today what is MT202 covered, which is general financial institution transfer, and also the MT205 cover. We'll discuss both the serial method of payment and the cover method of payment. Now, in addition to this, in series one, there are many other messages, but we are not taking in taking them into account because those are all related to check payments. So, what is our scope today? Our scope today understand. 101, 102 and 103 and both the serial and the cover method. Now let's understand what is customer payment and checks before we move to type 2. If any party in the payment chain is a non-bank entity, in that case I would use series 1 for making the payment. And if all the parties in the payment chain are banks, I will use the series 2. The series 2 payments I have the series two messages. I have divided them into two parts. As we said, series two is used 
when every party in the payment chain is a financial institution so you cannot have a non bank entity where with which uh, if you are doing a payment transaction in that you will use series 2 series 2 is to be used only when every party in the payment chain is a bank now for our understanding we are dividing this messages into two parts you can see 200 and a 201 separately created by me and then another category which i have created is 202 203, 204, 205, 205 cover and a 210. Now MT200 and MT201 are used by a bank to move its own money from its one account to its own another account. Which means when the bank uses a 200 or a 201, the bank making the payment is also the beneficiary of that money. On the other hand, usually when I use an MT202, or a 203 or a 205 the bank which is paying is not the beneficiary of the money so first two will usually be used when i want to move my own money to my own account elsewhere the 202 and 203 and 205 will be used when i want to use my own money to pay somebody else that is how it will come and then mt210 is not moving money it is only giving the information about receipt of a money how this is used i'll again cover that when we look at and uh, look at a real example once to reiterate what we said earlier we are discussing only push messages and therefore i'm not discussing mt205 204 in this discussion which is in red on your screen which is a push message a direct debate so what is out of scope currently is mt104 a customer related pull and an mt204 is a bank to bank related pool. So our scope will be discussing 200, 201. And then this two is what we are going to, not going to discuss out of that is 204. So this is the basic classification of MT2 series. Now let's move further and look at the category, which is category nine. Category nine is called cash management and customer status. Now this messages, these messages, category nine do not move money they move information only which means this could be used post facto after the transaction has happened now here 9 is used in order to inform you about the transactions so let's look at the MT900 and the 910 first before we move further so we got two classes 900 and 910 on one side and then I would have the other types 940, 941, 942 and 950 on the other side. Let's understand the classification which I have created only for our discussion today. Now whenever a bank debits your account for any outgoing payment then your bank assuming that of course you are able to receive these swift messages then every bank will send to you an MT900. So for every transaction of a debit in your bank account I will have an MT900 and for every transaction of a credit in your bank account I'll have the MT910 confirmation of credit which means every entry every transaction which is happening in your account in a day either of a debit or a credit would result into the bank sending you the 900 for every debit transaction and your bank sending you a 910 for every credit transactions so this is for every transaction which happens in the bank sometimes at the end of the day you would like to receive a statement of all the transactions which have taken place in your account in that case you request the bank to give you your bank statement this bank statement will consist of the opening balance the debit transactions for the day the credit transactions for the day and the end of the day balance if you want that statement you could get a statement either in MT 940 format which is a customer statement message or you could get an MT 950 again a statement message so statement messages 940 and statement message 950 provides you with the details of the opening balance the debit transactions in your account the credit transactions in your account and the closing balance for the day then what is the difference between a 940 and a 950 let's understand that also briefly before we move forward now when a 940 message is created the 940 message is created by an account servicing institution which means it is created by the bank holding an account and it is sent to a, to a party which could be other than the account owner let's take an example if a bank called jumbo bank if a bank called sorry a gold bank has an account of a company called jumbo 
if the bank sends this statement to jumbo jumbo is the account owner jumbo should receive mt950 in other words an account owner would receive from his bank a statement in form mt950 and when jumbo wants its statement to be delivered to somebody else some other party authorized by jumbo company in that case the gold bank will send an mt940 to the other party which is authorized by the account owner so this is these are the two types mt940 and the mt950 as against that you could only ask your bank to provide you with the balance report the balance report comes in the form of mt941 this balance report or mt941 is used to transmit only the balance information and it reflects the situation at a given point in time for example in the field 13d of the message you tell the bank the bank tells you that this is the balance at let us say 2 o'clock in the afternoon so then in that case all the the opening balance for the day the number of debits and the amount of debits for the day up to 1 o'clock or up to 2 o'clock only the number of and sum of credits up to 2 o'clock and the balance would be given to you so my balance statement in mt941 does not give me transaction by transaction details it gives me the opening balance the summary of debit transactions the summary of credit transactions and the balance at a given point of time of the day if i want that i will need or i request for an mt941 the mt942 gives me interim transactions interim transactions meaning the bank has opened at 9 o'clock at 12 noon i tell my bank give me the statement of all the transactions which have happened from 9 o'clock in the morning till 12 noon the bank will send then to me the mt942 it is used to transmit the details and the summary information about entries debited or credited to the account since the last statement suppose i was given this statement last evening then from that point onwards till now if i want this statement let's say up to 12 noon i will get a 942 then the last one is the request from the customer a customer who wants to receive from his bank either a 940 statement a 941 balance report a 942 interim transaction report or the 950 statement message he would send an mt920 request to his bank asking the bank to provide any one of these 940 41 42 or a 50 so mt920 originates from the customer to the bank where the customer would ask the bank to provide him with a statement the bank would respond with a 940 41 42 or a 50 another point to note before we move further we spoke about 900 and 910 which is created for every transaction which means every 900 and every 910 must get reflected in your mt940 or your mt950 because mt940 and 950 will be consist of multiple debits in your account and multiple transactions of credit in your account all such will get reflected in your statement of account so this is how you have the mt9 series for doing the transactions now having understood this mt9 series let's now move forward to the rules now i am taking you through the process where we have understood that I would use MT1 series for my customer payments. I would use 2 series when I am making a bank to bank payment. I would use 9 series when I want to receive or send information to my customers or I want to receive information from my bank. That's how I'll use the 9 series. Now when we create the message, any swift message for that matter, this is not limited only to category 1, category 2 and category 9. When you want to create any message from category 1, to category 9 the message needs to comply with four basic requirements out of these four basic requirements two requirements are mandatory they are a must and two requirements are not mandatory they are optional you may follow them you may not follow them we are now going to discuss the first mandatory requirement the first mandatory requirement is following or complying with the network validated rules the nvr every swift message would provide you with the network validated rules now what's a network validated rule a rule which has to be complied with by the creator of the message and if it does not comply with that message rule the nvr then an error code would be defined once you create a message the network will check 
whether you have complied with the NVR and if not, the message would get rejected along with the code. In other words, NVR is a rule which is validated by the Swift network. You create a message. When you create a message, the message must comply with the network validated rules. And many a times the rule specified may affect more than one field in the message. It places then a condition on one or more than one field specified. Then in that case, these are also known as conditional rules if they impact more than one field. You see on the screen one example of the network validated rules for the message called MT103. This is only one of them. It's not the only one which has to be complied with. And you can see the error code is also defined there. To summarize on the network validated rule, it is a rule which has to be mandatorily followed by the creator of the message, has to be in line with the rules given in the user handbook. If you upload the message, the network of Swift will check the compliance and if the compliance is not found, it may reject that message. This is the concept of the network validated rules. The second kind of rules which are mandatory and you need to follow them are the empty usage rules. Now, empty usage rules are not validated by the network, which means for these rules, there is no error code defined, but these have to be used for the correct usage of the message. Again, this may affect more than one field. So the second compliance, which is mandatory, is to comply with the empty usage rules. So two compliances, which I said are mandatory, are empty network validated rules and the empty message rules. We also said there are two compliances which are not mandatory. These are optional. So you have the empty guidelines. The guidelines are not validated on the network and, uh, and are not mandatory at all for the correct usage of the messages. They actually tell you about what are the good practices. The guidelines may affect more than one field in the message. But as we said a little while ago, these are not required to be complied with. The fourth optional compliance is the market practice rules. The market practice rules specify the rules published by some recognized market practices group. So here you have the example of the payments market practice group creating a rule for the MT103. Again, we don't need to comply with the MT guidelines. They are not mandatory. And we also don't need to comply strictly with the market practice rules. So both the guidelines and the market practice rules are optional for compliance. So this is the mechanism of the compliance. The first two NVR and the usage rules are must and the next two are optional. Now let's look at the process of how the message gets uploaded. We have looked at the system of how do we create the message and then which are the rules to be complied with. Let's look at the compliance. Let's look at the process of uploading message messages. Now on the screen, I have got two entities, Gold Bank having the BIC, the business identifier code, GLBB indicating Gold Bank, IN indicating India, BB indicating Bombay, XXX could be representing any bank, any branch of that particular bank. So to summarize, I have GLBB, Gold Bank, IN India, BB, Bombay. On the other hand, I have got the bank called Silver Bank, which is indicated in the big by SLBB. US indicates United States, 33 indicates New York. So I got two banks, one in India in Bombay, another in USA, New York. The Indian bank, Gold Bank, wants to send a message to Silver Bank. What you see above the dotted line is the Swift Cloud, the Swift Network. At step number one, Gold Bank would upload a message. This message has to mandatory comply, mandatorily comply with the NVR and it also must comply with the empty usage rules. Once the message is uploaded, it is accepted by the Swift me mechanism, the Swift network. The Swift network will now validate the network validated rules which are specified for each and every Swift message. If the network validation rules are met, we send back a message, an acknowledgement. So there are two kinds of acknowledgements. One is a positive acknowledgement known as the ACK and the negative acknowledgement called the NAC. Now, in response to every field message the Swift receives, it would send an acknowledgement message to the sending logical terminal. The acknowledgement message contains the message validation result. We said earlier that NVRs will have to be validated. So this includes the message validation results. When the message is validated, then you receive and it is found to be correct. The checksum is also correct. The checksum verified is found to be correct. Then we will send the ACK to you. 
if the checksum is found to be incorrect then we will send the NAC. so ACK means swift has accepted the message and is willing to process it for further delivery NAC means the message fails to meet the compliance requirements of swift so let's assume that we have got an ACK. when you get the ACK, the message is now downloaded on the other side it will be transported from india to usa and will be downloaded on the other side into silver banks terminal when it is downloaded in the silver banks terminal silver banks terminal is able to read that message if it is able to read that message properly it will issue the user acknowledgement the uac as i'm calling it on the screen if the terminal at silver bank is unable to grasp that message unable to understand that message then it will give a negative user acknowledgement which is the uac so uak or uac would mean that silver bank has received the message it is accepted it for processing UNAC would mean silver bank has not received the message in the proper way if requested by gold bank swift will also send a delivery notification of having delivered that message to silver bank that comes here at step number five so in reality when you make a payment for every act which you have received for an outgoing message you must match the delivery notification because ACK only means swift received it ACK does not mean silver bank received it to ensure that silver bank received your message you can request for a delivery notification to be given to the sending bank in this example the gold bank now sometimes it may so happen that when gold bank uploads the message at step number one in the swift network it is unable to get the ACK or an ACK, it does not know the status, it does not know the fate of that particular message. In that case, we will now resend that message with a flag called possible duplicate emission. So if you do not receive an acknowledgement of a fill message within the timeout period, usually 15 minutes, then you must resend that message to Swift mechanism by using the possible duplicate emission trailer. At the same time, when swift tries to download it in silver bank it may not get proper uac or a unac from silver bank it does not know the status whether silver received it or silver has failed to receive it in that case the swift system would try to download that message once again in silver bank with a flag called possible duplicate message the system itself will then add the pdm trailer to any output message which it is sending because of invalid proper invalid prior delivery so in this way you'll have the delivery of the messages being done between two banks now having understood the concept of delivery let us now start with the discussion on mt1 series which is the core topic of our day understanding the mt1 series now let me take you one by one the first message which you're going to discuss is the mt101 which is a request for transfer let me explain the scenario to you first when we look at the scenario then we understand it and then i will explain how the messages are used now let's understand where we will use the mt101 this message can be sent either by a non-financial institution account owner now in this example the non-financial institution account owner is jumbo company jumbo company has an account with silver bank so you have got two financial institutions here gold and silver this message can be sent by jumbo company or any party authorized by this jumbo who is the account owner and we will send this message to gold bank and then through gold bank to silver bank let's understand who is having an account with whom so jumbo company in this example has three accounts with silver bank account number one account number two and account number three our assumptions could be two one jumbo does not have swift connectivity two jumbo has swift connectivity it could be either of them now if jumbo does not have swift connectivity it will communicate with its bank gold bank telling gold bank to tell silver bank to move money from silver bank so let's understand once again jumbo has account with silver bank jumbo is asking gold to ask silver to make the payment out of jumbo's account with silver so jumbo sends a non swift message because assumption here is jumbo does not have the swift connectivity when jumbo say has the swift connectivity it will use the mt101 asking gold once again that please make the payment out of my accounts at silver bank 
when gold bank receives this message at gold bank we are not doing any accounting entries because we are only acting as a pass through we will take this message from gold bank uh, from jumbo company at gold bank and then forward this mt101 to silver bank we are now gold bank we are telling silver that our customer jumbo wants to make a payment out of its account with you when silver bank receives this message from gold bank silver bank would then move money as per the instructions given by jumbo through gold bank this is how mt101 is used it can be used to order the movement of funds from jumbo's account at silver bank to somebody else so it can be ordered that out of account number 1 make the payment to beneficiary 1 we can also order simultaneously that pay more than one beneficiaries one at your bank itself that is beneficiary 1 and another beneficiary at ulster bank beneficiary to make both these payments so in 1 101 i could have multiple payment instructions beneficiary 1 as well as beneficiary 2 in in this example beneficiary 1 is the customer of silver bank itself therefore there is no csm involved it's it's going to be a book transfer and beneficiary 2 is not a customer of silver bank therefore you we are using the clearing and settlement service the other mechanism could be silver bank is told by jumbo to send a check to beneficiary 3 now all these three payment instructions can come in single message when we create this mt101 message at a jumbo or at gold this message will have two sequences part 1 that is sequence a and part 2 is sequence b part a sequence a is general information and sequence b is repetitive information what is repetitive information pay beneficiary 1 so much amount on such and such day pay beneficiary 2 so much amount on such and such day pay beneficiary 3 or the repetitive sequences so this message can be used to make multiple payments simultaneously now some of you may have this question that if jumbo has an account with silver bank why is it not speaking directly with silver bank and speaking only through gold bank let me answer that question to understand the business case now there could be two business cases which i could take here business case one is where jumbo has outsourced its vendor payments to gold bank it is possible that jumbo has got numerous accounts across the globe across the world but it does not wish to speak directly with each of those banks it is telling gold bank that whenever i want to pay any vendor anywhere across the world i will give the instructions to you only and you gold bank on my behalf operate all my global accounts so if that kind of a vendor payment management service is being offered by gold bank in that in that case jumbo would not speak directly with any of those banks jumbo would speak only to gold as a single point of contact and gold in turn on behalf of jumbo would speak to all the remaining banks this is scenario 1 the second scenario second business case where this could be used is cash concentration the jumbo has got offices and bank accounts across the globe it wants to move all its money at one single place maybe at london in uk it would now tell gold bank that at the end of the day whatever is my balance across the globe in all my bank accounts move it to one single place this job of concentrating money is given only to gold bank gold bank then on behalf of jumbo will speak to all the other banks where jumbo has its account move the money from all those accounts into one single place in london this is how the company called jumbo does not speak to all the banks where they have the account they will speak only to one bank who in turn will speak with the remaining banks where jumbo has its account in this manner the mt101 is used now if gold bank has to speak with all the other banks like silver the other banks like silver need to know that gold bank has the right to operate jumbo's account that is where we have this concept of bilateral agreements the banks need to enter into an understanding that gold is authorized gold is allowed to operate the account of jumbo at the other banks this is how mt101 the request for transfer is used to move money to move jumbo's money at some other banks but the party who initiates this payment the bank which will initiate the payment in this example would be gold bank let us now move to the second example but before we move to the second example i want you to note one fact here clearly in this example at silver bank it is jumbo who is having the account and jumbo is a customer of silver bank here so please keep this in mind that in mt101 when the money was paid 
the money was paid out of Jumbo's account at Silver Bank. Why I want you to remember this is because of MT102. Now in MT102, I am still having the Jumbo Bank, the Jumbo Company. I am having Gold Bank, and I am having Silver Bank. But we need to note one more fact clearly at this juncture is now in this example of MT103, MT102, Jumbo is not the customer of Silver Bank. In this example, Gold Bank is the customer of Silver Bank. Gold Bank holds the Nostro account at Silver Bank. So please note this difference. I'll repeat this point that in the earlier example of MT101, Jumbo was a customer of Silver Bank and had account with Silver Bank. And please note carefully that in this example of MT102, Jumbo is not a customer of Silver Bank. It does not have any account with Silver Bank. In this scenario, Jumbo is a customer only of only Gold Bank and Jumbo has an account only with Gold Bank. Jumbo has no relationship with Silver Bank. Now, when the message process starts, the Jumbo Bank, the Jumbo company is intimating Gold Bank to make multiple payments to its vendors. Beneficiary one is a vendor of Jumbo. Beneficiary two could be a vendor of Jumbo. Beneficiary three could also be a vendor of Jumbo. So when this message is created by Jumbo, it is sent to Gold Bank. When Gold Bank receives this message, Gold Bank would debit Jumbo's account because Jumbo's account is now only at Gold. Forward an MT102 message to Silver Bank that out of Gold Bank's account with Silver Bank make multiple payments. So this message is sent by Gold Bank on behalf of the ordering customer Jumbo to another financial institution Silver Bank for making payment to various beneficiary customers. The message is requesting Silver to make the payment to beneficiaries either directly, directly meaning beneficiary one is directly with Gold Bank. So pay, make that payment directly or indirectly where it could be through CSM and then to Ulster Bank and then almost to beneficiary two and maybe through a check. So this is how you can have 102 used to convey multiple payment instructions in this example. The account which is getting debited now at Silver Bank is not belonging to Jumbo. The account which is getting debited at Silver Bank is the account of Gold Bank. It is the Gold account, Gold Bank Nostro account. Now this 102 could be used for a domestic payment within a country. It could also be used for cross-border payments. Same is the case with your MT101. I'm going to the next point now is understanding the MT103 and probably here is where we'll be spending a little more time in discussion. So let's look at the MT103, a single customer credit transfer. Now if you have understood MT103, it's quite simple to understand MT103. MT102 has multiple beneficiaries like we had beneficiary 1, beneficiary 2, beneficiary 3. If we take the same example but only with one beneficiary to be paid, only one party to be paid, I would use an MT103. So in case of MT103, again in this case also, Jumbo is not a customer of Silver Bank. Jumbo is a customer of Gold Bank only and at Gold Bank, Jumbo has its account. So this message would be sent by Gold Bank on behalf of Jumbo company. Jumbo is the ordering customer here for Gold Bank. It could send it directly or through a correspondent asking Silver Bank that Silver Bank, please make the payment out of Gold Bank's account and pay some beneficiary. So you would have the first payment where the beneficiary also has an account with Silver Bank. You have the second payment where the beneficiary has an account with somebody else. Now in this case, please note that I am not using the name beneficiary one, beneficiary two, beneficiary three, because in a MT103 single customer credit transfer, you can pay only one party at one go. You can't pay multiple parties. This is a single customer credit transfer. So when we want to pay beneficiary one directly, I would use this message. When you want to pay beneficiary one at Ulster Bank, then same message. But in one message, you cannot have more than one beneficiary if the message type is MT103. Under MT103, there are three subtypes. I will use the words MT103 Core, MT103 STP, and MT103 Remit. These are the three types of messages which we get under MT103. So where do you have the Jumbo account here? The Jumbo account is only with Gold Bank. There is no Jumbo account at Silver Bank. This is the example of MT103. 
Now I'm going to explain two more mechanisms under MT103, which is MT103 serial method of payment and MT103 cover method of payment. Now, when we have the serial method of payment, to explain both of them, in fact, I'm going to use an example. This is our example. We have got two companies, Megacorp and Michelin. This is going to be, in our example, a cross-border payment. Megacorp banks with Gold Bank in UK. It wants to remit an amount of 10,000 US dollars to Michelin tires banking with Silver Bank in New York. So you have got two countries. One country is UK. The other country is United States. Diamond Bank in USA is the correspondent of Gold Bank in UK. Since this is a cross-border transactions transaction, we'll use the SWIFT mechanism MT103. Two mechanisms I'm going to use, a serial mechanism and the cover mechanism. This is our case. We've got two countries. The line divides UK and the United States. The first part is Michelin is the seller. He's going to be the beneficiary under the transaction. Megacorp is the buyer. He's going to send the money. The first stage is Megacorp has an account with gold. Michelin has an account with silver. Gold has a correspondent called Diamond in United States. So at Diamond, Gold would hold its Nostro account. Let us start the process. The first step, Michelin has sold the tires to Megacorp. Megacorp now needs to make a payment of $10,000. Megacorp would tell its own bank, Gold, to make the payment. At Gold Bank, Megacorp would have its account. We would convert this GBP currency or the euro into dollars and then after having debited the party Megacorp and credited our Nostro Mirror account in our own books at Gold Bank, we create the MT103. This MT103 moves from gold to its correspondent bank, Diamond Bank. Now when Diamond Bank has received the message at that point of time, Diamond Bank would debit the Gold Bank's Nostro account in Diamond Bank's books and credit their own settlement account, they will release an MT900. We discussed MT900 earlier and we said for every debit entry for an outgoing transaction or maybe charges, we'll issue an MT900 to the customer. So here, Diamond has a customer called Gold Bank. Diamond has debited at step number five, the Nostro account of Gold Bank. We release MT900 telling Gold Bank that we have debited your account by the amount of $10,000 because of a particular MT103 which has come into us. Once Diamond has debited Gold Bank and released the MT900, we will push this 103 from Diamond to Silver. Now the MT103 message has moved serially from Gold to Diamond and from Diamond to Silver Bank. After having pushed this message 103 from Diamond to Silver, We'll create one more message at Diamond, which goes to the local clearing house. It could be a Fedwire 1000 message. It could be a chips message, which has gone to the clearing house like the Fedwire or the chips. At Fedwire or chips, Diamond and Silver would have their participation, their accounts. When this message is received by Fedwire from Diamond Bank, Fedwire will debit Diamond Bank at the master account at Fedwire and credit silver bank's master account again at Fedwire and forward that completion of the transaction, the settlement of the transaction to silver bank. Now silver bank has got two messages, one incoming MT103 at step number seven and another incoming credit device from the clearing house at step number 10. Ideally, we should compare the messages coming at 10 and seven. Once both of them are matched, that is credit device is matched with the MT103 coming in from diamond, then at Silver Bank, we'll credit the beneficiary, that is Michelin. This is the mechanism of serial method of payment. This is how we do the serial method. Now let's move forward and understand the cover method of payment. Now in cover method of payment, I'm using the same example. So we are back to square one. I'm on the cover. The first step I have already clarified to you. Now this is up the step up to which we are having both the things in common. Michelin has to be paid $10,000 by Megacorp. Megacorp tells its bank, Gold Bank, make this payment. When Gold Bank receives this instruction, they are going to debit Megacorp, credit Nostrum Mirror. Now at this juncture, the difference is going to start. In the earlier example, Gold Bank created an MT103 and from Gold Bank in UK, that MT103 went all the way to Diamond Bank in USA. Instead of that, Gold Bank creates an MT202 cover and sends it to Diamond Bank and creates an MT103 but sends it directly to the last bank in the payment chain 
which is silver bank so instead of sending this mt103 from gold to diamond and then from diamond to silver we have sent it directly from gold to silver if this mechanism is used this is called as the cover method of payment mt103 starting from the first bank going directly to the last bank and instead of mt103 coming from gold to diamond in this case we created another message called mt202 cover this mt202 cover will inform diamond bank that diamond bank has to debit gold bank's nostro account and make the payment to silver bank it will have two sequences sequence a telling who is gold bank who is silver bank and sequence b telling diamond bank who is michelin and who is the sender megacorp so in this 202 cover though the series used is a bank to bank payment it is used typically along with an mt103 so diamond bank when it receives this message would now have only one message to process they will debit the account of gold bank send back an mt900 confirmation of debit mt950 could be your end of the day statement and send a fedwire payment message since we are doing this in usa to fedwire telling fedwire to move money from diamonds account to silver's account when this is done silver would get the credit advice silver would have received mt103 directly from gold at step number four at step number nine it receives the credit advice from fedwire, fedwire we compare both of them and then we credit the beneficiary this is the other mechanism called the cover mechanism of making the payment so we have got we have seen two mechanisms a serial method and a cover method if you look at the swift chart this is how the serial and the cover method would look, look like in the serial method the message flows message 103 flows in sequence so you can see three mt 103s under the serial method bank austria sends message a mt 103 to chase chase creates another message message b and it is sent from chess to abn abn again creates the third message message c it goes from abn ambro new york to abn ambro amsterdam this is how the serial method would work in a serial method the 103 would flow continuously from first to second second to third third to fourth till the last bank receives that 103 in a cover method if you can see the other example on the screen bank austria creates the 103 it goes directly to the last bank that is abn ambro at amsterdam so in this case the message 103 starts from the first bank and goes directly by passing everybody else to the last bank this is the process called the cover method of payment so we have seen two mechanisms the serial and the cover now at this juncture we have discussed three push message types under customer credit category mt101 mt102 and the mt103 let us now look at the series 2 series 2 is used for bank to bank payment and in bank to bank payment we had said there are couple of types which are used only for own purpose so we are going to look at mt200 now mt200 is used by a bank to make payment out of its own account and move that money to its own account elsewhere so now in this example gold bank has an account with silver bank and gold bank also has an account with diamond bank so both the accounts are owned by gold bank at the silver bank as well as at the diamond bank now gold bank wants to move this money from its own account at silver to its own account at diamond bank this is how 200 would be used so at this juncture let's go forward and also understand how now nine series is also used so i'll cover two series and nine series together now so in this case gold bank wants to move its money from its account at silver to its account at diamond gold bank creates an mt200 this MT200 is released by gold. It goes to Silver Bank. It tells Silver Bank that move Gold Bank's money to its own account, Gold Bank's account at Diamond Bank. When Silver receives this message, Silver will create a clearing house message, the clearing system message by debiting the Nostro account of Gold Bank and crediting in their own books, that is in Silver Bank's books, the settlement account mirror. Once this is done, they will send the confirmation of debit because we have that is silver sends the confirmation of debit because we have debited gold banks no straw account when this message goes to the clearing house clearing house would debit silver bank in their books and credit diamond banks in their books complete the settlement once the settlement is completed they will inform diamond bank that we have paid you when diamond bank gets paid diamond bank would credit the no straw account of gold bank and after that 
they will send the MT910, which is the confirmation of credit message to Silver Bank. So Silver Bank sends the MT900 confirmation of debit. Diamond Bank sends MT910 confirmation of credit. This is how MT200 is used. In this MT200, just to summarize, Gold used MT200 to move its own money at Silver Bank to its own account at another bank called Diamond Bank. This is MT200. Now, what would be the difference between an MT200 on one side and an MT201 on the other side? Only one simple difference. In this example, Gold moved money from its own account at Silver and there was only one transaction involved here, moving the money to Diamond Bank. If Gold wants to move money from Silver Bank, at two different places simultaneously, which means there are going to be two payment transactions. In that case, we'll use the MT201. So in MT201, I'll have this scenario where gold has three bank accounts. Gold has a bank account with Silver Bank. Gold has a bank account with Platinum Bank. Gold has a bank account also with Diamond Bank. What gold wants to do is gold wants to move its own money from Silver Bank to its own accounts at Platinum Bank as well as at Diamond Bank. So there are two transfers originating at one go from Silver Bank. One transfer going from Silver to Platinum, another transfer going from Silver to Diamond. If I want to move two transactions simultaneously, I would use a 201. If I wanted to move one transaction only, I would have used an MT200. So in this example now, we want to move money from Gold, Gold Bank's account at Silver Bank to platinum this is transaction one transaction two is from the same account at silver bank to the account at diamond bank so there are two transfers to be made by gold bank if they want to make these two or more than two transfers gold would now create an empty 201 it goes to silver silver will now create the csm message and send a debit advice the confirmation of debit to gold bank that we have created these transfers this is what that empty 900 is telling gold bank that we have debited your account at Silver Bank for two transactions. Once this is done, CSM will process the settlement. CSM will send that transaction message of settlement to both Platinum and Diamond. When Platinum and Diamond receive this money from the clearing system, they will credit the account of Gold Bank, both at Platinum and Diamond, and then issue the confirmation of credit MT910. So both of them send the MT910 to Gold Bank, Platinum sends an MT910 confirmation of credit. Diamond sends an MT910 confirmation of credit. This is how the messages will reach Gold Bank. Gold Bank now realizes that the credit has happened. At the end of the day, all the banks would send an MT940 or an MT950 depending upon the situation. In this way, the payment would be made by using MT201. So to summarize, 200 is for one single transaction. 201 is for multiple payment transaction and in both the cases the beneficiary was the same party who had sent the money in this example gold had sent the money the recipient of the money was also gold this is how the MT200 and the MT201 would be used now we have understood 200 201 let's look at 202 I'm going to use an example once again to explain the 202 in the 202 example we have four banks one bank is Jemson, the other is HSBC, the third is Fortis, the fourth is Citibank. Now in this example, Citibank USA is the correspondent of Fortis Bank in Brazil, which means at City, Fortis has its Nostro account. And Jemson has its Nostro account at HSBC. Jemson Bank wants to pay an amount of $10 million US dollars to Fortis Bank in Brazil. So this is the summary of our example. We are going to use an MT202 in this case. Since the transaction of payment is in USA, I will use the US RTGS system there, which is the Fedwire RTGS system. Let's understand the process. Now in this example, Jemson and Fortis enter into a transaction with each other. That they have done a deal. Jemson will lend $10 million to Fortis. That's how we have understood the transaction. Now Fortis, is expecting this money from Jensen and the money would arrive in Fortis Bank's Nostro account at HSBC. It is possible for Fortis Bank to inform HSBC in advance that you should be expecting this money in Fortis Bank's account at HSBC. So Fortis Bank intimates HSBC in advance 
that you should expect an amount of 10 million dollars in my account which will come from Jensen through Citibank. HSBC receives this notice, MT210 notice to receive. In this MT210, Fortis is telling HSBC that you should expect an amount of 10 million dollars to come into my account on such and such date from such and such bank. This is the message called MT210 notice to receive. This gives advance intimation to HSBC that some money is expected to arrive from Citibank. When this is done, Jemson will now initiate the payment transfer. Jemson has its nose to at Citibank. Jemson intimates Citibank that please pay $10 million to Fortis Bank having an account with HSBC. For this, Jemson would use an MT202. When Citi receives this message, Citi is going to debit the Nostro account of Jemson Bank and credit the RTGS settlement account. At this point, when Citi debits Jemson's account, we will issue an MT900 to Jemson, telling Jemson that your account has been debited. Citi would now create a message which is used by the RTGS system. This could be a Swift message, this could be an ISO 222 message, this could be a proprietary message. In USA, they use the ANSI, the American National Standard Institute's formatted message, ANSI messages. So an ANSI message goes to the Federal Reserve. At Federal Reserve, we will have the account of Citi and HSBC. We debit Citi, credit HSBC and forward the settled message onwards to HSBC. When HSBC receives this message, HSBC would credit the account of Fortis and intimate Fortis by sending a confirmation of credit that is MT910. In this way, Fortis would come to know that the account has been credited. At the end of the day, both Citi and HSBC may send a 940 and a 950 statement depending upon again on the situation. So this is how the two series is used. In this example of two series, we used only one transaction. We created only one transaction, Jameson making a payment to Fortis Bank, single transaction. If we wanted to make multiple such payments, then I would have used an MT203. An MT203 is used to make multiple payments. So Jameson wanted to simultaneously pay Fortis, maybe Wells Fargo, and maybe somebody else. In that situation, instead of using an MT202, I would have used an MT203. 203. Now the message type which I have not yet discussed is MT205 out of the messages which we spoke about earlier. A 205 and a 202 are almost identical. The basic difference between a 202 and a 205 is a 202 is used for cross-border transactions and in this example since we had a cross-border transaction we had used an MT202 originating from Jemson to City. If all the parties in this transaction where within one country like Canada or like United States or in some single country in that case for a similar transaction in domestic which was a domestic transaction I would have used a 205. To summarize then the basic difference between a 202 and a 205 is a 202 is to be used for a cross-border payment transaction like the one which you see on the screen and a 205 is to be used when the transaction is done within one single system one within one single country. That's how the 202 and 205 will differ. So what we have discussed in the two series are 200, 201, 202, 205, and 20210. That is 210. We have also discussed the 202 cover and a 205 cover. So in summary, we have discussed series one. In series one, we have discussed 101, 102, and a 103. In series 2, we discuss 200, 201, 202, 203, 205, and a 210. In series 9, we discuss 900, 910. Then we discuss 920, 940, 941, 942, and 950. So this is the summary of what we have discussed today. Now before we conclude on this, because this is where I'm com completing my presentation. Now if you have any one of you have any questions from you, your side, you can go ahead and ask those questions to me. So now I'm opening the question and answer session at this point. Any questions which you may have on any of these series? Yes. Uh, 
and in case you are not able to speak with me you can type your question on the question pane i'll answer that question Okay, now there are a couple of questions. What is the advantage of using the cover or the serial method? Yogeshwar, let me answer this question for you. If you recall the scenario, in a serial method, the message moved through each of the banks. When the message moves through each of the banks, each of the banks are going to take a little time to process that message further and each of the message, each of the banks in between are going to add their charges for that particular message. So in summary, a serial method would delay the payment and the serial method would have more cost associated with, with that because everybody would process that message. On the other hand, when you send it through the cover method, the advantage is that one, the message reaches directly to the beneficiary's bank and since only one bank is processing 103, the cost could be less. This is advantage one. The other advantage is that sometimes the beneficiary and the beneficiary's bank would have good relationships with each other. So when they have a good relationship with each other, it is possible that the beneficiary's bank without receiving the payment may instantaneously credit the beneficiary with an understanding that if the funds do not come through, the beneficiary would refund the money. In this situation then, since 103 is received by, in our example, Silver Bank immediately, Silver Bank can immediately credit the beneficiary without waiting for Diamond Bank to actually move the funds. So the second advantage of a cover message is a faster mechanism of payment provided, of course, the beneficiary's bank is agreeable to credit the beneficiary on the basis of only MT103. That is the concept or that is the advantage which the cover has over the serial. Yogeshwar. Are we clear? Okay, then the other questions. Let me open the other questions. Are empty messages only used for wire transfers or can they be used for low value payment as well? Okay, Amar, there is no limit on the amount of money to be transferred by using the empty ser series. The maximum num characters you can have are 15 digits. So anything which is within 15 digits is the max. Of course, there is an implied, uh, there, is, there is one, uh, uh, decimal point also involved in that so you can use it for any value up to those 15 digits are we clear up to this point Amar good now going forward can you please explain again 205 cover is the question from Deepak Deepak I'm sure you have understood 202 cover. 202 cover mechanism is, mechanism is used when there is a cross-border transaction. So when we took this example of moving money from UK to USA, we used the 202 cover. But if the transaction is domestically, that means both the sending party and the beneficiary party 
are in the same country instead of using a 202 cover i would use a 205 cover the difference between a 202 cover and a 205 cover is identical to the difference between a 202 and a 205 a 202 is used for cross border payments a 205 is used for domestic payments yogeshwar the charges by swift the, i'll repeat the question the question is is category 2 charged less or none as compared with category 1 messages now there are two kinds of charges which we need to speak about yogeshwar one is charges charged by the bank to their customers and charges charged by swift to the banks using swift mechanism now so far as swift mechanism is concerned the swift mechanism does not charge on the basis of categories they would charge you identically for every message irrespective of whether it is category 1 category 2 or up to category 9 so we charge you identical for any category then when we have the csm the csm is to be used sanjay kumar when we are moving the money between two banks in a country so we do not have uh, we don't need a csm if the money is moving within the same bank that is called the direct account relationship Chaitanya has a question for every 202 cover message do we need to have will be having 103 details the answer is yes the message user reference number the MUR will be identical and in 202 cover message we need to mention this fact that this is a cover message being used for a particular 103 message the reference number of 103 has to be mentioned in every 202 cover message. How FX rates are applied to these messages and how banks can earn money is the next question from Mayur. Let me answer this question. Now point number one, the FX is to be kept outside the messaging because when, let's take our example, when we spoke about this example, in our example the money moved from one country UK to another country USA and the conversion would have happened when Megacorp's account was debited at Gold Bank. So when Megacorp's account was debited by Gold Bank, they would have converted either the GBPs or the Euros into equivalent of dollars. That transaction is out of scope of the MT103. This is part one answer to your question. Now we need to understand one more concept which is called the which is called the interbank settled amount field and the instructed amount field in the message. Let me explain the interbank settled amount field and the instructed amount field by taking an example. Now when a bank wants to make a payment to another bank, they would pay each other in a particular currency. For example, one bank wants to pay another banks in US dollars and that was our example just now. But it is possible that actually the instructed amount is euros. So when the instructed amount is a different amount than the interbank settled amount, one more field in the message is required to be created and that field is called exchange rate. So using the exchange rate field, we can have a different interbank settled amount and the different instructed amount. Instructed amount is the amount Megacorp wants to pay Michelin and interbank, interbank settled amount is what Diamond Bank would pay Silver Bank. So banks will pay each other, that amount is called interbank settled amount. And what the parties want to pay each other is called instructed amount. And these two, if they are different, there'll be one more field of exchange rate. So the answer is that exchange rate may come into the message only when the interbank settled amount is different than the instructed amount. That is my answer to your question, Mayur. So two ways this message can be dealt with. Now, Nostra account, what does it mean? Nostra account would be one bank's account with another bank in a foreign country. That's what a Nostra account would mean, is my answer to Ashok. Okay, the next question is from Himanshu. How to decide what mode to use, 103 or a cover? If cover has advantage when banks use serial method. Good question, Himanshu. Let me answer that question. Now, we need to divide the timeline into three parts prior to 9-11 attacks in USA from 9-11 attacks in USA up to 
2009 and post 2009 now prior to the attacks in usa in 911 both the systems existed 103 serial and 103 cover but at that point of time the cover message used was a pure 202 what does pure 202 mean a pure 202 would mean that i would not give the details in that about who is the sender of the message using our example it was megacop and who is the beneficiary in our example it was michelin these details would be missing in that message so because the banks were not getting the details of who is the party making the payment and who is party the beneficiary 202 was stopped from 911 attacks till 2009 a 2009 a new message was created called 202 cover now having said that why are we discussing this is which mode to use now which mode to use is if you want to move the money faster then if your bank is using a payment engine the payment engine would use the 103 it also depends upon whether you maintain relationships with each other now i have not discussed the point of the rma at this point but let me explain what rma would mean now when bank 1 wants to send a message to bank 2 and then forward it to bank 3 bank 4 bank 5 like that in the line each bank must have relationship with each other what is relationship management is if i want to send a message to you you should be willing to accept that message to you so when one wants to send a message to two two should be willing to accept it from one if two wants to send that message forward to three three should be willing to accept it from two like this every bank who is receiving a message should be willing to receive that message from the sender of that message if that relationship is missing then i will not be able to pass on the message further in that situation also has to be understood himanshu when you want to move the message either serial or cover so to summarize if i want to move money faster you i want to reduce the cost or there is no relationship then i will use the different mechanism the next question is if two banks have no stock on relationship for those located in uh, those are located in two different countries that is correct in a cover payment why is it necessary to send mt103 show up since the last bank needs to understand why it is receiving the payment that cover requirement is there is it mandatory that the usd payment should be processed as a serial payment and is related to sequence a sequence b implementation meher what you say is right earlier usa insisted upon having only serial method and they had banned the cover method but as we just discussed post 2009 when the new 205 cover was introduced you can make the usd payment now also in the cover method amar i i will explain that difference to you but i will take it offline because that will be a long explanation about explaining the difference between sending institution ordering institution account with intermediary institution etc i will explain that but i'll take it offline cug is the close user group difference between high value and low value payment typically speaking ashok swift messages do not differentiate between a high value and a low value next point is from sanjay does 210 need any accounting 210 is only expecting to receive money it is used not to do accounting but the use of that sanjay kumar is to enable the banks to manage their liquidity effectively when you receive a 210 you understand from the customer that the customer expects that bank to handle a lot of amount so for management effective management of liquidity an mt210 is required for every 202 cover do we have 103 every time the answer is yes i already answered that question i believe okay then the next question is what is a nostro mirror account rama in our example see gold bank was having the nostro with silver gold bank would also do its own accounting so when gold bank maintains in its own books the recording of transactions done at silver that is called as the mirror account the real account would be at silver bank but the accounting done by the account owner is called the mirror the difference between mt and mx is mx is basically 
based on the ISO 222 XML standard Shilpa, whereas MT is the Swift proprietary standard. Jyoti, let's understand the closed user group. Now, when the messages are to be exchanged, the messages usually, I will not say it applies to all the messages, are within a closed user group. Closed user group is a community created by Swift. So, when a message is to be exchanged, if the message can be exchanged only within the closed user group, any Swift member outside that closed user group will not be able to receive or send that message. Let me take an example. Assuming now we have we have a message called MT103 remit. When an MT103 remit is to be sent, the remit can be exchanged only between the parties who are the members of CUG. Let's assume that 10 different banks come together and form their own group, a small group within the entire group of Swift. This small group is what I'm calling as the closed user group. Out of other than 10, no other bank is a member of this group. So when a message is to be sent within the group, then the closed user group would receive it. So a message like MT103 remit can be exchanged only between this or within these 10 different banks, which are the members of this closed community. So CUG is a closed community. A message meant for that closed community cannot be exchanged with anybody who is outside that closed community, which is called as the closed user group. You're right that all banks are within the closed user group of Swift community, but within that bigger closed user group, we can create a smaller closed user group. And now Amar, since I said we'll take it offline, you have my email ID on the screen. Please drop me a test mail and I'll respond to your queries. So now, from this point on, what is the difference among MT103, 103 remit and 103 STP? Let me explain this point. This is a question from Yogeshwar. Now, let me tell you that there are three message types, core, STP and remit. You are asking me that question. So let us understand. Now, let's take an example. An example are a couple of fields to identify the parties. So when you want to identify a party, let's take an example. Amar was asking, about, asking me about the ordering institution. So Amar, let me explain that point also at this juncture only. We, I'll open that example and then explain what the concept of ordering institution also was. I'm going back to the example of uh, Gold Bank making a payment on behalf of their customer. This is the example. Now when you see this example, in this example, we have gold bank which is creating the message i will go to the message which is serial method and then amar your point will also be answered so now in the serial method we have megacop megacop is the ordering customer gold bank is the ordering institution so now when gold bank creates this message number one mt103 which leaves gold bank and reaches diamond bank this answer is for amar Gold Bank will be the sender of the message. The receiver of the message will be Diamond Bank. When Diamond Bank receives this message at step number four, it will take it forward at step number seven to Silver Bank. When it sends forward to Silver Bank at step number seven, Diamond Bank will say in this message that the ordering customer is Megacop. The ordering institution is Gold Bank. I am the sender's correspondent. That is Diamond Bank is the sender's correspondent and Silver Bank is the beneficiary. That's how the banks will be defined. Now, if between Silver Bank and Michelin, there is one more bank, Silver Bank will become the receiver's correspondent. If between the receiver's correspondent and Silver Bank, there are a couple of more banks. This is what I will call as the intermediary bank. So intermediary banks would be used typically to continue the path of the transaction because if one of the links is missing the message will not move further so to add that link that link would be the link called intermediary bank so Amar are we clear on this point that ordering customer is 
Megacorp. Ordering institution is Gold Bank. Diamond Bank is sender's correspondent. Silver Bank is actually beneficiaries bank. But if between Michelin and Silver Bank there is another party, then Silver Bank would become another bank. Then Silver Bank would become the correspondent of the receiver. Are we clear, Amar? Okay. Now going back to this example from this question uh, from Yogeshwar about the difference. Now when we have this concept, let's take the field 52A, ordering institution. In this example, ordering institution is gold bank. Now how can we identify the gold bank? We can identify the gold bank by using its name and the address. That can be one of the mechanisms. This is actually called option D in the message. In fact, field 52 has got two options. Uh, option A, where we have to use the BIC, the business identifier code of Gold Bank, and option 2 is option D, which is where we use the name and address of the Gold Bank. Now coming to the first part, which is core message. In a core message, when, gold, when the core message is created, Gold Bank can be identified either by option A, Gold Bank's BIC, or option D, Gold Bank's name and address. Now, Assume that this message has reached silver bank or diamond bank even for that matter. When we want to process this message in an STP way, if you provide the automated application at the bank, which is receiving the message with two choices, A and D, it may become difficult for that application first to identify which options have been used and then parse that message after understanding the option and then process the message. This could consume a little time. This could become confusing. This may cause errors. Therefore, instead of providing multiple options for this field like 52A, both options A and D, in the STP, you are allowed to use only one option. So when Gold Bank creates the message called 103 STP, instead of using multiple options, we will use only option A, Gold Bank's big. Now everybody who receives this message that is diamond or silver, when they pass the message, the only option available there in an STP message is option A, give the big of the ordering institution. These applications will immediately understand option A only can be used. They can parse it very fast. They can process it very fast. So STP is nothing but a subset of the core. If core gives you multiple options, STP will give only one of those options. And this is how it will help the banks to process it in the straight through processing manner by parsing it in the faster mode. This is how the STP and the core differ from each other. Yogeshwar, up to this point, are we clear about the explanation, the difference between STP and the and the core? Yes. So now how do we identify the STP? The STP identification is done by putting a flag in block 3 of the message. There is a field 119. In field 119, you message that men mention that it is STP. So the parsing engine understand that this is a STP. So only limited number of options would be used. So we have compared 103 core, 103 STP. Let's now talk about remit. Now remit is where extra data is required to be given. Let me give you two different examples to understand the concept. Now when, when you are in the United States, it is possible that a uh, doctor is being reimbursed by an insurance company about a claim of treatment given to a patient. So the payment message may carry extra information about what reimbursement, which reimbursement is being made, about which patient and for which invoice raised by the doctor, which claim raised by the doctor on the insurance company. To take another example from India, all of you in India receive your cooking gas subsidy to the payment systems. Now the payment system is not interested in knowing why the gas company, cooking gas company is making the payment. So you get the details about who is the company making the payment, what is the cooking gas subsidy for which month. This extra information is carried by the system. So payment systems sometimes carry information which is not necessary for processing the payment transaction but is necessary for understanding the details of the transaction between the sender of the money and the receiver of the money. This extra data if it has to be carried which is called addenda in the American scenario is called remit in this swift scenario. So under swift remit, I have got an extra field called 77T envelope. And in this envelope, I can add extra data, which is not needed by the payment system, but needed by the parties who are exchanging those messages. That is the concept of remit, providing extra remittance information. 
needed by the sender needed to be sent by the sender to the receiver so we have now understood the difference between 103 core 103 remit and 103 stp yogeshwar are we clear at this juncture So now we have concluded with the questions. If you have any more questions or need to understand anything more about the Swift, there are two ways to do it. You can drop me a mail and I could answer one of your questions or a couple of your questions. But if you want to learn more about Swift or the ISO 2022 messaging standard, you can join our course on which is called as the Certified Payment Messaging Expert. So with this, I thank all the participants. We had more than 200 participants today. I thank all of you for participating in this question. Thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, I'll answer one more question from Yogesh. You don't use Remit plus STP simultaneously, Yogesh. <laughs>